Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time I've actually taken a full selection of thermal paste and I've used the Noctua NHD15 and to test which one is actually the best thermal paste to buy. <music> Okay, so when it comes to the overall benchmarks, I've done two different benchmarks, Cinebench R23 and 3D Mark CPU test because it hits the CPUs, uh, the CPU can different. Now, of course, I've got Aeronaut, I've got the XC3 from Gamdas, I've got the Thermalrite TF Extreme, I've also got the Hydronaut from Thermal Grizzly, I've got Cryog. CP5, I've also got the Arctic MX4, and then of course I've got Cryonaut Extreme. So for Aeronaut, this was the 5900X with PBO enabled, so I allowed it to push as much as it wanted. The highest the wattage went was 197 watts. So for Cinebench R23 with Aeronaut, the idles were 29 Celsius with a max of 81. 3D Mark CP test, the idle 29 with a max of 73. And when it comes to the XC3, Cinebench R23 was idle with 31 Celsius with a max of 82. And 3D Mark CP test, the idle 31 with a max of 75. The Thermorite TF Extreme, Cinebench R23, the idles were 29 Celsius with a max of 81. 3D Mark CP test, the idles were 29 Celsius with a max of 71. Hydronaut, the Cinebench R23 idles with 30 Celsius with a max of 81. 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 30 with a max of 71. The Cryog CP5, the Cinebench R23 was idle at 30 Celsius with a max of 83. 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 30 with a max of 72 Celsius. The Arctic MX4. The Cinebench R23 was idle at 31 Celsius with a max of 84 Celsius. And the 3D Mark CPU test was idle at 31 with a max of 74. Now for the most expensive thermal paste here, it is the Cryonaut Extreme. For Cinebench R23, the idles were 30 Celsius with a max of 80. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 30 Celsius with a max of 70 Celsius. Okay then, so what do you think? Now, these thermal pastes, they all vary in different price ranges. Of course, the Aeronaut is the cheapest of the Thermal Grizzly line. And then, of course, you've got the Cryonaut Extreme. That's their most expensive, unless, of course, you come to the liquid metal. But what I will say is you're going from one of the cheapest to the high end when in terms of thermal paste. But when it comes to the overall thermal paste, believe it or not, the best one that was the best price to value is actually the Thermalrite TF Extreme, which I wasn't surprised. It's a very good thermal paste. I used it previously in all my testing, but now I use primarily Thermal Grizzly thermal paste. So, but this is still a good option. This is the 12.5 gram tube of it. And then of course, then you've got the ones from Cryog, the Gamdas ones, the of course the very popular MX4 from Arctic. But then of course you've got the Aeronaut, the Hydronaut, and then you've also got this, which does come in a very good fancy packaging. And this is what you need to realise with the Cryonaut Extreme, is this stuff is meant primarily for extreme overclocking. This can go down to negative degrees where the rest of them wouldn't be able to. This can go up to very extreme heat as well as low temperatures. That is where that is very good. Also, this does come with three little um, spreaders. So yes, the, the overall price for the Thermal Grizzly 
Cryonaut Extreme, yeah, it's a little bit over the top, but if you are an extreme overclocker, then a lot of people do generally go with this or the, I believe it's the KPX from um, Kingpin, I believe. I've never actually tested that. But when it comes to Thermo Grizzly's overall uh, lineup of thermal pastes, personally, you'd be actually fine with anyone. I personally find the Cryonaut, not the extreme, the normal Cryonaut, to be the overall better one when it comes to the overall uh, lineup. But the Hydronaut isn't bad, The also the Aeronaut isn't bad as well. And then of course then you've got the Arctic MX4, which of course is a very popular thermal paste on the market. Now of course, you know, this is very popular on Amazon. So what I will do down below is I will list all of these down below for you guys to check out. But I'm not here to tell you which one to buy. I'm just here to tell you guys which one's the best and as far as I'm concerned the overall best one there was for the Cinebench and 3D Mark CPU test was the Cryonaut Extreme but the other ones are only so many degrees difference but that does count if it was a one degree difference that could be a margin of error due to the ambient air also I was testing it through the day so the room had also heated up as well so i hope you enjoyed the video it's a bit it's a bit different to what i usually do i wanted to do this video a while ago but i've been waiting for thermal paste to come from thermal grizzly so as always i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe because i have got something very very uh special that arrived from noctua it is the new the brand new nhd 15 g 2 LBC CPU cooler. It's beautiful. But that review will be coming very soon. So, as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard from Welshy Tech. Good. Bye.